Good morning, everybody. It's my assembly this morning. We're not live in the hall, though, because we're setting up for the spinathon because today is children in need, hence my spotty background here. Um, I am going to talk to you a little bit about children in need. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cycling, cycle safety and what's inspired the spinathon and where the money is going to go. So there's lots of important messages this morning and also the logistics of the day. So the timings for each um, team and year group and etc will be on the slide at the end. So I look forward to seeing you down in the hall on the bikes later on. Should be a great morning and we'll see how many miles we can cycle and which house will actually be the winner in the end. So when did children in need actually begin? It's been going since Christmas Day in 1927. It was the first BBC radio broadcast appeal for children raising £1,300 across four different children's charities. And in today's money, that's about £70,000. In 1955, there was the first televised appeal at Christmas. In 1978, Terry Wogan made an appearance and did a five minute appeal. And in 1980, the modern BBC Children in Need appeal was born. And so was I. In the first show, £1 million was raised. Pudsey Bear made an appearance in 1985, created by graphic designer Joanna Lane. And since then, Children in Need has been going from strength to strength every year with different charity singles, game shows and celebrity events. In 2009, at the 30th TV appeal, they raised over 20 million and launched the first rock concert. In 2011, the first rickshaw challenge began where a rickshaw was ridden from Edinburgh to London. And that event alone raised 1.9 million and involved many children riding part of the journey too children who had benefited from the money raised by children in need. In 2015, we had the Country Fowl Rambles. In 2018, one billion pounds was raised. And in 2019, we held our first spinathon. And if I remember correctly, De Valence rode the most miles that year. Now, an athlete who has accomplished many things, including the Atlantic Rowing Race for Children in Need in 2005 is James Cracknell an Olympic rower, but turned to cycling and marathon running after he completed his Olympic career. And the reason I'm talking about James is because in 2010, he suffered a severe head injury while cycling in America. He was attempting to run, row and cycle from Los Angeles to New York City in 18 days. That's over 2000 miles. And on the 20th of July, he was hit on the back of the head by a wing mirror of a petrol tanker. He suffered brain damage and has been left with epilepsy. But due to him wearing his cycle helmet, he kept his life and six months after this accident, he was completing ultra marathons all over the world. Now, I know quite a few students in our school cycle to school. I drive past them every morning. Most of you wear a helmet, but there are a few who don't. And I think it's important to realise just how valuable they are and how they could save your life while cycling, should you ever come off your bike or be hit in an accident. Here's James Cracknell. You can see that's the state of his bike after he was hit by the lorry. And there he is in hospital with his wife looking over him. He had a really, really long journey. Um, his head injuries could potentially have been a lot more severe, um, leaving him partially paralysed. But he was incredibly lucky because he had his helmet on. Now, in 2013, this young man, Ryan Smith, was 16 years old. And he went out on his bike without his helmet because he didn't want it to mess up his hair. He was hit by a van and his parents were told that he wouldn't live for longer than a week afterwards. Ryan was left with severe, severe brain injuries. He's now 23 and faces life in a wheelchair, but with great courage, he has finished school, attended college and has competed in various challenges thanks to his dad setting up a charity for him and thanks to children in need. His dad is a paramedic and he visits school to talk about this and linking it to the importance of wearing a cycle helmet when out on your bike. Ryan was on Children in Need in 2014, and with thanks to this incredible appeal and the way it supports the smaller charities like Ryan's, um, Ryan Smith's Foundation, he's able to get the support that he needs and specialist equipment that he needs to help him live a relatively normal life. So today, we're going to do our bit, and we are going to raise money for Children in Need, but also we're going to donate part of it to the Ryan Smith Foundation. So this you can see is the Facebook page and there's still lots of posts and you can scroll down and see and um, follow Ryan's story throughout the years as he's developed his strength and um, accomplished fantastic things from age 16 to now 23. Um, so this is how our plan is going to work. OK, each spin bike is fitted with an odometer. OK, and it will record the mileage and you also, as you're cycling, be able to see how fast you can make it go. So you'll be able to look at the speed, too. 
So at the beginning of each spin session, OK, the mileage from each spin bike is going to be recorded on a big spreadsheet so that I can add up which house has done the most miles by the end of the morning. Um, we're going to attempt to cycle from Pembroke Academy to Pembroke in Wales. That's 275, uh, 79 miles, sorry. And we might make it there. We might make it partially back. We might make it all the way back. But we'll have to see who has which house has got the fastest and um, strongest legs um, to cycle the most miles. So at 10 past nine, I have got year seven and 18 for debalance. At half past nine, we've got Della Hay. And at 10 to 10, we've got the year seven and 18 for Declare. So lower school break will be as normal. No students will be on the bikes then. Staff might hop on and add up to the miles, which is great because every member of staff also belongs to a house. So those who are free are welcome to come down and have a bit of a cycle. Um, from 10.30 onwards, we've got year 10 and 11. Um, sorry, year 9 and 10. So we've got year 9 and 10 for team de de balance at half past 10. 10 to 11, we've got Delahaye. And then after break at 11.30, we've got team Declare. Year 11 are going to do it all together. So I've got four students from each um, house in year 11 competing again at 10 to 12. And that should mean that we are wrapped up and done by lunchtime. Each cycle session is roughly 12 to 15 minutes long. You'll do the same course for the same amount of time to the same playlist. OK, so there's no um, unfair um, advantages or anything there because they're doing it to different songs and some people are going faster for longer, etc. All right. So all students in the entire academy are asked to generously donate a pound to these two charities that we're raising money for. Um, students taking part have been asked to perhaps bring in a little bit more money. We may find that parents want to sponsor you a little bit or perhaps your form can club together a few extra 50 P's um, to contribute to the bucket that will be in the hall around the bike. So anybody with dinner money change or change from break time can also donate a little bit more. Um, and we will be wearing a cycle helmet while we are cycling. Now, obviously, we're not in danger of falling off the spin bikes because our feet are strapped in and we're not going to be hit by any vehicles and we're not going to be in a mess on the hall floor. But we are raising awareness of just how important um, cycling safely is because of Ryan's story. Um, so let's see if we can make it from Pembroke Academy to Pembroke in Wales. We have got a little sort of visual motivational uh, set of images as well. So for each song, there will be an image on the projector. And I'll just give you a little example. When we've got a hill climb, all right, for three minutes and 45 seconds, we are going to be trying to chase Mrs Black, who's at the top of that hill, and she is eating all the cakes. So we need to get there before she's eaten them. So it's just a bit of fun to keep us laughing. Um, it should be a good morning, but it's all for charity. Um, but it's a good bit of uh, health and fitness as well. So good luck to everybody and everybody taking part. I will see you in the hall at your required time slot. Thank you very much.